All right. So uh, welcome to the Fundable Founder, episode two. I'm here with Sherry Ackerman from Concerto Bio. Welcome, Sherry. Thanks for having me. Great. So tell us a little bit about Concerto first. What's your elevator pitch? Sure. Concerto builds groups of microbes that benefit health. Um, our first products address chronic skin inflammation, especially eczema or atopic dermatitis. Um, and our competitive advantage is that we can find these groups of microbes in a way that no one else can using a technology called K-CHIP, um, which we invented at MIT. And K-CHIP allows us to test um, how well millions of different combinations of microbes um, might address eczema and find the ones that do this best. That's great. Um, so you must have a background in science uh, and other technologies that led you to this. Just tell us a little bit about your origin story. What's your background? And then what led you to launching this business? Sure. I do have a background in science. I have a PhD in chemistry from UC Berkeley. And then I came out to MIT to do my postdoc. Um, I worked with Paul Blaney at MIT in the Broad Institute. And while I was there, met Jared Kay. Um, <clears throat> he's the inventor of K-Chip. Okay. And um, we were working in the same subgroup, just got along super well. Um, and at some point in the fall of 2018, he asked me if I might be interested in starting a company with him to try to commercialize K-Chip, specifically thinking about the microbiome space. Um, so we did the Broad Biomed Startup Program and then also enrolled in um, the Harvard Biotech Club Activate Program, which yep. Um, yep. that was where we met another one of our co-founders, Adil Bahalim, who's our head of business development, um, and just got along, again, just got along super well and um, realized that our skill sets were really complementary. We were also paired with... Um, three different mentors who have been with us ever since then. Actually, it's been two years now. Um, and that program went really well. Again, I think we were very much in the exploratory stages at that point and realizing, all right, this is not a terrible idea. Like it could work. <laughs> um, and what we realized that we needed another skill set, and that was um, microbial engineering and being able to culture microbes from human samples. Um, and so we asked one of Jared's friends, Bernardo Cervantes, who's a PhD student in the lab next to ours, um, Jim Collins lab, and uh, he was super excited about it. Um, and so he joined us. So then it was May of 2019. We were four co-founders, um, no money. <laughs> all of us still needed to exit academia, um, but you know, we, we all, thought it was a really awesome idea and wanted to try to pursue it. So basically we set June of 2020 as the date when we wanted to spin out um, and started working on what would it take to actually make that possible, right? Three of the co-founders needed to graduate. I needed to publish my paper in order to kind of exit gracefully. Um, we were applying to all kinds of like fellowship programs and non-dilutive funding and prizes and you know, just trying to get any traction. Um, and I would say that probably there were um, maybe two things that made it possible for us to actually launch in, in June of 2020. One of those was that Jared and I were awarded fellowships in the Activate Global program, right. um, which is Cyclotron Road. Um, and that came through in March of 2020. So the pandemic had just started <laughs> and uh, we got money to start a company. So we're like, all right, I guess, I guess we're doing this. Um, and then we competed in a bunch of um, prizes over the course of that spring, um, got money from the Hertz Foundation, Harvard President's Innovation Challenge, the Harvard Alston Fund, and that then made it possible. So Jared and I were covered through our fellowships and then Adele and Bernardo were covered through prize money. And that was the runway that we needed to then be able to actually do like a, a VC fundraise. That's great. So you really started by pulling the team together, finding the right team, right? You had your K-chip, you knew you wanted to commercialize it. You wanted to make sure you had the right team. 
And then, you know, I think it's an important kind of path or strategy that you chose was to find some non-dilutive funding to allow you to really stand up as a business, right? And then go get funding. So how much, how much non-dilutive funding did you end up raising uh, at the start? Um, it's actually a hard thing to quantify. So the, the fellowships covered my salary and Jared's salary and then gave an extra 100K for technology development stuff. Um, so we were two people in 100K. Yeah. And then um, in addition to that, it was 125 in, in prizes, like money that came in before the end of June 2020. Yeah. How did you go about finding all these different prizes, you know, things to apply for? A lot of it was just what was available through our networks. Um, I think we were really fortunate because the Harvard ecosystem had had really embraced us and we had embraced the Harvard ecosystem. And so we were plugged into the iLab and the President's Innovation Challenge Alston Fund. And we had advocates in the Harvard system that you know, believed in us and wanted to make sure that we would you know, be well positioned um, to win some of that funding. Great. Which is really helpful for us. Yeah, yeah no, it's important to, to build up that network and you Incredible. mentioned mentors and other programs and, uh, and then combining that with some of the non-dilutive funding is, is a great way to get your business off the ground. Yep. But then the next challenge was probably going out and finding some VCs who might want to provide some additional funding. That is correct. Yes, <laughs> we, were, we were very aware of the fact that the funding that we had was only going to last until maybe November or December, right? It's, it's June and we're looking at drop dead date of November, December 2020. Uh, it's going to take us longer than that to get to a meaningful milestone. So time to go get some, some more money. So what was your strategy around that? What, if you can remember back, like your team, how did you decide to go about reaching out to VCs, finding the right VCs, yeah. getting the pitch organized? I mean, what was your general strategy? Yeah. Um, I, I hesitate to, you know, explain it as if it was so planned out because okay. a lot of it was just, falling over ourselves like well what's the next step what's the next step we we didn't know right but if I were to think about it in phases I think the first phase was figure out the story that we're telling and a lot of that happened through the Harvard PIC um they they have really great coaching and we were going to be competing anyway and so we we left PIC with this great deck that was compelling and had gone through a lot of uh friendly, but harsh criticism <laughs> from all of our mentors, right? And, and it was good because of that. Um, then it was around, okay, well, what do we need to actually raise? How much money do we actually right. need? Um, and figured that out. Although I would say when we, that was, the number we settled on was wrong. <laughs> and we didn't <laughs> figure out that it was wrong until we were maybe halfway through fundraising. Um, fortunately in the end we were oversubscribed and so it, it ended worked up out, fine, but, um, <laughs> yeah, we had no idea what we were doing. Uh, and then just, we pitched a ton. So I would say that the Harvard iLab demo day was incredibly important for us in terms of connecting us to a lot of different angels and VCs, um, Activate Global also had kind of a meet the new fellows event. Um, and we met a couple of our eventual VCs um, through that event. Um, How many pitches do you think you did, even including the practice ones? Yeah, I actually know the answer to that question because we kept a spreadsheet. Um, <laughs> so, so it's upwards of 70 pitches okay. um, over the course of three or four months. That's a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a um, lot. It, it, Along the way, did you have any embarrassing moments was there anything that stands out that <laughs> um, you're comfortable sharing yeah I think there are there are sort of the embarrassing painful moments and then there are the embarrassing I can I can laugh at it moments um I think the embarrassing painful moments are around just 
when you don't know, you don't even know the rules of the game, let alone how to win. Um, and sometimes you make a mistake where you realize that you thought that the world was organized in this way, but actually it turns out that the world is organized in a completely different way. And so there, there were a couple of those moments. I think maybe a funny story is that my, um, so one of the women that I was at Berkeley with at the same time, she was in chemi and I, I was in chemistry and we had crossed paths a number of times as acquaintances. Turns out she works at one of these VC firms. Okay. And uh, we typically would be very disciplined about doing prep work ahead of time. Like know who's gonna be in the room, know what the portfolio of, this, of the VC is, know what, we, what value we think they can add, what questions we wanna ask them. Um, but I was coming in super cold to that meeting and didn't realize that I actually knew this person. <laughs> and so we're going through intros and then at some point she says, yeah, and we were at Berkeley at the same time. And I just, like, my brain just exploded. I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, you're right. And we even, like, served on these committees together. Uh, and yeah, anyway, it was, she was very gracious about it. It was funny, um, but yeah. Yeah, Networks and I, you know, I can verify <laughs> that you were, you're, you are a very prepared person and did do your homework in advance of a lot of meetings. So yeah. uh, that was probably, you know, just one of those lessons learned about, yeah, being prepared is the right thing to do. Right? It really is the right thing to do. Yeah. And so along your fundraising path, was there, was there any like aha moment where you're like, oh my God, I think we've, we're figuring this out and, and we we have some investors who are interested. Mm. Or, you know, or what was it that kind of got you to that point where you think you started to get investors who might commit, you know? Right. Yeah, so we went through a lot of investors saying, wow, this is awesome. I would be really happy to be part of a syndicate. I would be really happy to follow. Um, but nobody who wanted to lead. <laughs> and I think that is just, that is the story of trying to raise money, right? It's finding the person who's going to take the first step. Um and, you know, the, the day that we got our first term sheet, that was incredible, like an incredible high. I don't think I saw that coming, though, at all. I wouldn't okay. say that, you know, I knew going into that meeting that we were going to get a term sheet. We had been putting pressure on them to do it, but yeah, we didn't know. So, I mean, your, your time frame for raising your first round was pretty compressed, right? I mean, you had... You know, this you're talking about a three or four month period, and and you're trying to create that buzz around what you're doing, and try to create that um, that you know, getting a VC to have the confidence in you or the trust in you to to make that investment and and put their take their first step, right? So, was there anything in particular you did when telling your story about yourself and your company that you think really helped build that trust or the help get them somebody motivated to say, yeah, this is, this is the company I want to back. Yeah. I think we were riding our academic credentials pretty strong at that point. So all of us were coming out of the MIT Harvard ecosystem and, and VCs like that kind of credential. I think that gained us a lot of street cred. Um, I think putting the technology so we had we worked really hard to figure out how to balance an initial application of the platform with the platform itself because it is it was it became so clear that the vcs needed to see that we had this differentiating platform that that platform was super sexy and and can do things that no other platform can do but it doesn't matter unless you lead with the human need of there are 200 million people around the world who have eczema and there's no cure for this disease. And, and that human need, that market demand, figuring out how to balance those two things um, to build a sense of FOMO, like we are gonna be the team that's gonna crack the microbiome because we have this technology and we know how to apply it to this really incredible human need. Um, yeah, that, I think that was really essential for us finding a story that resonated. That's fantastic. 
Um, and so uh, you raised your round. What did you do the first day those funds hit your account? Was it <laughs> was it a party or did you? Well, it was October of 2020. So it was <laughs> hardcore COVID days. Um, we we did have a Zoom party. Um, it was a, so it was a Friday. I had, it was a very weird experience, I will say for me, because I had spent the entire week just herding cats, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to get everything signed, trying to get all the money in, um, sending reminder emails, dealing with people at the last second being like, I want a board observer seat. <laughs> and like, oh, why didn't you ask me a month ago? Um, so I think I arrived Friday at 5.30, everything was in and I was like, sweet, I want to go to sleep. Yeah. And my team was like, oh my gosh, we raised our ground. <laughs> and uh, I, it was just like a really interesting moment of the journey of the, the CEO who's like getting all of this together and the journey of the other members of the team can sometimes be quite different. Yep. Um, so yeah, we had a party. It was, it was over Zoom. It was super fun. My roommate bought me champagne. And I still have the cork. It's nice. like sitting next to my qualifying exam cork, my PhD defense cork, and then my first fundraise cork. That's <laughs> uh, awesome. Yeah. So I don't know. It, it was it was good, but it was also very strange. Awesome. Yeah. Any anything I didn't ask or real words of wisdom that you'd like to pass on to our audience? Maybe something that someone advised you along the way that you thought was a great piece of advice or something you wish. Someone had told you. Yeah, told us. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, I think, I think the finding the VCs that fit you. You don't want money from any VC. You want money from the VC that believes in the the, build, the company that you're actually building. Um, it is just super important. And then once you find those people, you, ha you have to create that fear of missing out, that yeah. FOMO that will get people over the edge feeling like, ah, th th these people, they're gonna do it. I wanna be on board. Um, yeah, so be, be prepared going into meetings, like have the list of questions that you wanna ask this VC because if they're the wrong VC, like you don't want to move forward with that. Yeah, I know. And, um, you know, you, you asked us some very good questions at our meeting and, you know, it was it, a lot of it was about finding that fit. You know, why is why is Mass Ventures interested in Concerto and and why should Concerto be interested in Mass Ventures? Right. And um, that really helped you stand out. Um, and and it, it's a great, great quality that you have as a as a founder. Thank you. Uh, so, well, one last question to finish this off. Describe yourself in one word. Intense. Intense. I love it. Great. Well, thank you so much, Sherry. Uh, Concerto Bio, really enjoyed having you on today and I really appreciate your insights. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. To innovate, invent, and disrupt? We're your partner to fuel your growth. Contact us to learn more.